I am sad because I'm finishing Isaiah pretty soon. I didn't think when I started it, I would, it was like 66 chapters. How, how am I going to get through it? It was a struggle, but so well worth it because I learned so much too. It's It has the last few weeks, especially last few days, has really strengthened my faith, especially after the election being so so heartbroken and dejected. But but have been have my faith and strength, spiritual strength restored, especially each time God said, look at the stars. I am the one who stretched the heavens and spread out the earth. I created you, I created me. It's like, this is, who are you talking about? Is my arm too short? I cannot save? That really has bolstered my faith, really and truly, whether we believe him or not, he, this is his world. The, as Psalm 24 says, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and the world and the people who dwell in it. That's it. It's settled. So now we, I come to chapters 51 to the first part of 52. As last posting, we talked about the second servant song. Now the first servant, Israel has failed. So now second servant, you know, God is preparing us to meet the second servant. <clears throat> so in chapter 51, he speaks of the past, what he has done in the past. He speaks of the future, how the, he's going to roll away this earth and this heaven and prepare for us a new heaven, a new earth. And he speaks of the present. And, and it goes on to what he will do. So understand again that this was written well before the exile. You know, don't don't listen to anyone who says that uh, this part of Isaiah wasn't written by him was somebody else due to all Isaiah whoever it is it is it, Jesus and the apostles and Paul quoted for Isaiah he never they never said uh due to all Isaiah said this they said Isaiah like it's one Isaiah so I am I believe too one Isaiah and even if the scroll the Dead Sea Scroll Isaiah is like one whole complete continuous scroll it wasn't even divided into chapters and verses it was put in much later so that settled, settles it so what what about the past God says I'm the one who 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 cut you out of the rock, who took you out. You were nothing. You know, you, there wasn't anything called Israel. I was the one who looked unto the rock whence you were hewn. You know, I I cut you out of that rock and to the hole of the pit whence you were dug. See, I, it, it was me. From the time of Abraham, your father, and unto Sarah that bear you. I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. See, from the time of Abraham right to that start and well beyond too. God goes beyond in verse 3 and her desert like the garden of the Lord. See, and he will make her wilderness like Eden. So again, it goes right back into the creation of this heaven and this earth, the garden of Eden. It is me. It is me. So, and then it talks about the future. What the future where God, verse 4, when mine arms shall judge the people and on mine arms shall they trust for the heavens shall vanish away like smoke and the earth shall wax old like a garment and they that dwell therein shall die in like manner and my salvation shall be forever. Say the hand of the Lord, the arm of the Lord, you know, when you so, saw it's poetical, it's metaphorical. When we talk about hand of God, it means his action. <clears throat> not, not that he's a person, his spirit, that he has hands and legs and what have you. When he talks about my arm shall do it, ha, that means I shall act. And he speaks of the current situation, what they're facing then, the, the exile. He, this was written before the exile, but for the exile, he says, don't worry about those people that you see, that you that took you into exile. Verses 7, fear, fear ye not the reproach of men, okay? Neither be ye afraid of their revilings, for the moth shall eat them up like a garment, and the worm shall eat them like wool. 
say, don't worry if they revile you, say, ah, ha, ha, ha. But, you know, just like a moth that will eat up your winter clothing, you put your winter clothing away and the moth comes in and eats it up and you take it out and say, oh, look, this lazy piece of what was a sweater before. So that's how that's going to be. So don't worry about them. Verse 9, he says, awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. So here, for some strange reason, the writer of Isaiah, Isaiah is telling God to, to awake, awake, Lord. <laughs> Like he's not awake, but but God reminds him, verse 15, But I am the Lord thy God, that divided the sea, whose waves roared. The Lord of hosts is his name, and I've put my words in thy mouth. So time and time again throughout the, this document, God says, I am he who, who took you out from the rock. I am he who took chose Abraham to have him leave his land to go to the Can to Canaan. I am he who was in the Garden of Eden. I am he who, who created the heavens and the earth. I am he in future will roll up this heaven, this earth, and create a new heaven, a new earth. I am he. Verse 17. Now the focus is turned to, to Jerusalem, to the people of God. Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, which has drunk at the hand of the Lord, the cup of his fury. So understand that even as Israel has been, is in exile in Babylon, staggering, you know, there is a, another image further along in that chapter of, of uh, this people, the, a woman being drunk, staggering in the streets of Babylon, not drunk, not from wine. Understand that they, they are drunk. It is very clear here. They did not drink. It was not from wine. It's, they have drunk from the cup of God's fury. Understand what Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane. He shrank and thought that he was going to drink that cup of the Lord's fury. But in the end, he said, if I have to, I will. And he did. So here is this image of people being drunk in in Babylon, on the streets of Babylon, like this drunken lady staggering around, falling down, and no one to put, to cover her and protect her. She wasn't drunk from wine. She was drunk from drinking the cup of God's fury. And even as we remember how, how Jesus, after being scorched, after being having a crown of thorn on his head, as he staggered down via Doloroso, drunk, like a drunken, staggering under the weight of that heavy wooden cross. He was not drunk from drinking wine. He was drunk from drinking, having drunk from the cup of God's fury. That cup that was meant for you, that cup was meant for me. He drank it on our behalf. You know, this is really powerful imagery. All these, you know, I, I, I would definitely recommend all of us to go back to, to read it again and ask the Holy Spirit. Each day I ask the Holy Spirit to impress upon me these things. And each time I read it, he heeds my request. And I see it's like, whoa, this is powerful stuff. This is really powerful stuff so that when we read it and it is impressed upon our mind, if we should fall, or if we should do things that's contrary to God's will, we should be ashamed. We will not, it's like, we will not drink from the cup of God's fury. Our Lord Jesus drank it, went to the cross, he said, drink it to the last drag. Not just taste it, drink part of it, but drink it to the last drag. It's like, okay, verse chapter 52. So what is our response to, to speak it, to listen to it, heed the messages, live it, learn it, and to speak it. So here it praises the feet, feet. Hmm? I thought it's the mouth that's important that speaks a message. No. 
Well, unless the feet is willing to, to go to speak to people, they will not hear. So here, chapter 52 is 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publishes peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publishes salvation, that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. St. Paul, too, in Romans, I think Romans 10, praises the feet. How beautiful are those feet. Beautiful feet. Why is the feet that brings you to preach, to speak of the salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. And above all, verse 10, the Lord has made bear his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations. Again, Again, speaks of the arm of the Lord, the action of the Lord that brings this, this message to, to the nations, not just to Israel, to the nations of the world. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. And the God of Israel will be your reward. Yeah, the one thing about Isaiah, he loves this. Yeah, he's... His, word, his name for God is the Lord of hosts, the Holy One of Israel. We would not love, understand the love of God until we understand the holiness of God. Yet the holiness of God is so incredible that there is this huge chasm between us. And because of his love through our Lord Jesus Christ, he has dis dis dispersed that chasm so that you know, the New Testament says, because of what Jesus did on the cross, we can go straight in through that curtain. He, can, he just split open the curtain and we can go straight into the sanctuary, God's sanctuary, and we can call him Abba, Father. You know, think, think for a moment what has been done for you and I. And then our, our lives will be changed. Our perspective, spiritual perspective will change and our lives will change according to it. And this is... This is so beautiful, and I'm sad to leave Isaiah, who has been such a great friend all this time, all these few days, especially after the election, with what is going on. But we will keep the faith. It is, look at the sky, look at the earth. It is God who created the heavens, the earth, you and I. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And be encouraged and stay faithful.